It was well past midnight, with a sickle moon sailing through gray clouds. The streets lay in quiet lines on the face of the town below. Each house was dark, save for the occasional reflection from a window catching the street light when the wind rustled through the trees. One house did not even have that. It was wrapped up in the night and dreaming. Clocks ticked softly in its rooms. For some, sleep came easy in that steady, reliable movement of time. But not for everyone. Down the hall, past the frame photographs of a baby boy, then a toddler, then a little league shortstop, came a voice. Dad? Dad? Silence. Then again, more frantic. Dad! In the master bedroom, Luke turned on his reading lamp. He rubbed his eyes, yawned, and poked the mound of blankets next to him. Stanley, he said, wake up. Harold's calling for you. The next time he shoved. Stanley, the house is on fire. We're being robbed. A flying saucer landed on the roof. Wake up. Uh, what? What? What's wrong? That you sleep like the dead. And Harold wants you. He's calling for Dad. Not Daddy. Stanley squinted at the clock on his nightstand and groaned. He pulled back the comforter and swung his feet out of bed. The nubs of his spine stood out in stark relief in the lamplight. Grabbing a shirt, he said, How long will he keep doing this? He's almost seven. It's a phase. You had nightmares as a kid, too. Everyone does. Stanley paused halfway through putting on his shirt, the collar pulling back the skin of his face. It hurt. I didn't, he said. He shouldn't have strawberry ice cream before bed. I happen to love strawberry ice cream and sleeping all night. As if to prove it, Luke's breath slowed, curling in on itself. He started to drift. Go help our little boy, he whispered. 